Hey guys, so today we're going to make a really quick little pocket size notebook suitable for handbags etc. So you can see how small it is. I do have a ruler here. It is about 18 centimeters, seven and a half inches. Depth is five and a half or inches or 14 centimeters. And then I've put two score lines in it to create the spine which is a centimeter apart or about half an inch by the look of that to create a little spine so it's going to be a chunky little notebook this is just craft card i'm probably going to just circle these corners here i will try it on a seven and see what that's like yeah that's quite nice for the notebook i have a selection of papers coffee stained papers that i haven't used or scraps from previous projects an envelope that's been coffee stained that i've sealed the top down but i want to cut the sides off it so it's like a side loading pocket i'm just going to take a small slither off the side and then could do the same on that one and this time before we put the papers in we're actually going to do some if not all of the decorating this is our little cover and you can see we're going to end up with different layers i don't know if we need as many as this because it's not such a big space now with this one it's longer so what we can do is fold that before we go anywhere with it Fold that up and make it into a pocket. So that would be a pocket that way. And so that we wouldn't have a problem with it getting too thick. What we can do on that little bit there is just take a touch out. And then we could do something similar on the bottom. Those would fold up and make two little pockets. We can take some glue. So that's going to go in. That one goes that way. Again, you could bring that in and have a bit that flips out like that and with this side you could make a little tuck spot type thing by gluing it down on one side and letting it stay free to flip on the other Got another one that's probably too wide again you could have a top loading glue that bit down and have that as a top loading pocket that way and then cut the excess off and then a normal page slightly wider but would that make a little pocket could make a little tuck spotty type pocket with that one. We could just take the spare off. Just want to choose how we want them to go together. So that's got a double pocket there. That's another maybe something ordinary and we've got that one which is side loading pockets is that normal yep it might go with a color we've got some plain now that may even be too many papers even now because you're going to add things and when you add things they tend to get very fat no one really wants a super chunky so what are we happy to get rid of that one that one's nice that one's just a well it's got a nice burn mark on it that's a pocket 
Get rid of that one. That one. That one's interesting. Maybe get rid of that one. I'm going to take it down to six papers. With the cover, the first thing I'm going to do is use the white gesso to cover it very roughly because I'll be doing further treatments. So we just want to take off the brown a little bit outside and inside. So as soon as this is dry, I'll be doing the inside. Something to very quickly do is where the spine is, I have a bit more of the same craft card and I want to run that down just to make that spine area a little bit stronger. Glue that into place. Just make sure it sits between the score lines and let that dry off. I have this rose watercolour paint. I'm going to use this because I don't have much in the way of acrylics that are going to be the colour that I want to use. I'm going to give that a blast and see what happens when we mix it down. I'm not really sure what colour I want or what will happen because we're going on top of acrylic here. But I'm hoping it will do something. Okay, we're going to let that dry. I'm not a huge fan of this pink, but we're going to see how it goes. I've got a stays on black ink here and a script stamp. I've already got it over myself now and I'm going to very lightly stamp across. Next thing I'm going to do is to put this roses napkin over the cover. I don't know if this is a two ply or what, a three ply napkin. Uh, it looks like it's only two plies. Put this down, I'm going to use Mod Podge and cover the front and eventually cover the whole thing. But I will, if you've not seen a video where I do this, quickly show you. This will move a few things about because some of this is watercolour and it's wet so it will move some of the colour around. You can see the colours coming off a bit. It will dry clear. We're going to take the napkin and pop it over. Ooh, not yet. I'll make sure I do cover it all. It will get wrinkly. That's okay. I, I don't mind that. Cover it with a top layer. Gently. Because it's very easy to tear it. If you tear it, it's just part of the look. Don't worry about it. I won't. I'm going to do that on the inside as well. And hopefully I will be happy with that as the notebook cover. Now it's all dry, although it's very pink. I'm happy with it. I think it probably would have been better if I just left it with the white gesso and then stamped it rather than do the pink paint as well. But it's only a little handbag notebook, so it is fine. If you find it's a bit sticky, and this one is a touch, it's not too bad. Just take some baby powder and rub it over the surface. Eventually any extra baby powder will rub off. It's just initially it will change the colour slightly, but that will remove any stickiness. The reason I like doing the napkins on this kind of softer cover is it feels a bit like leather without being leather. So that's removed any stickiness. And then what I'm going to do to make this quite practical is rather than sew the signature in, the papers in, I'm going to punch through and do an elastic binding so that when the papers have been used you can remove them and add new papers. All I want to do is find the midway on here. You want to go as close to the edges as possible with the two holes that you're going to make. I want to just come in maybe a centimetre. centimetre in would be there. Hopefully that's going to be about right. 
perfection is not me definitely that's not right never mind if you're not happy with that you can recover it and do it again and i am tempted i've got this which is more roses all right let's just do it anyway that seems straight it's not bad it's not bad at all we could just leave it brown or i could cover it with the gray like on the outside Definitely made that thicker and therefore probably stronger. Let's just check it's in the right position. Let that dry now. I've measured it all up again. Let's see if I can get it right this time. One slightly different position to the other one, but to be honest, if I keep fussing, we'll never get there. Put it in, even though it's wonky. We're gonna put that on there. Hopefully I can see where on earth that's going. You can see it's gone over that side way a bit and when you look at that you can see it's not lined up perfectly at all far from it <laughs> so annoying this is elasticated i'm going to thread it through here and here I'm going to live with the wonkiness and call it quirky tie it so there's still some give, but not too much. Get rid of the spare ends a little bit. Try it now. Okay, put them all in. That is the papers. They're quite loose, but we're gonna be adding things to these pockets, which will bulk it out. I'm going to take them back out now because I want to decorate them and then slip them under as they decorate. I think to make this useful for a, a bag, then you could take some credit card kind of slot pockets at the front and maybe a bigger pocket at the back for spare bits of paper. But that is a die cut I have and I'm wondering if you could use that and then cards could go into this and slot up the notebook and i think they could i have this pad here which has some florals I'm going to die cut out that die i back the paper with craft to make it a bit stiffer and i'm also using the die cut cut a little corner pocket i'm going to glue them into the inside cover of the little notebook 